Hello guys, it's Garth here from Murphy's Film, and this is my camera collection. Early 2018. There's one. So, I showed you guys my shelf like that for a reason. That's because it's always looking like that. It looks pretty messy, and that's because you know, most of the time it is. I use probably about three or four cameras out of this entire collection, that being one of them and that being another. So without any further ado, I'm not going to go throughout this in any particular order or anything like that, it's just going to be whichever camera I pick up off the shelf and I'll give you a little backstory behind the camera, how come I came to own the camera and purposes for having it basically. So since I was here, let's start with this one. My Shikamat 124G. If you guys are regulars to the channel, you will have seen this in the previous video, which was a photo walk with this guy with the GoPro slapped on the side, doing a Vivian Meyer inspired photo walk. Little story about this camera. This is actually my second 124G. I bought this one because I was out on a photo walk originally back in September, and one of the guys we met up with, Alex, had a 124G and it made me really miss having mine. So for a while I was nosing around eBay, stuff like that. And one of my friends from down London, Perry, he has not been on this channel yet, actually, I'm surprised. Yeah, one of my friends from London named Perry, he wanted to get into medium format after me getting him into 35 mil. So he went out and bought a 124G, which then in turn made me after seeing Alex with his and then Perry going up and buying his, I got really jealous and missed my 124G like crazy. So I went out and got another one. I'm really, really pleased that I did because now that I've discovered Vivian Wyatt and all her work, I'm super inspired to go out and shoot this as you've seen. I've only shot an inspired role like that the once, but I'm definitely going out again because, oh my God, I love this camera. Light meter works on it, it's very clean, it's a nice copy, there's nothing really wrong with the camera. Works at all shutter speeds and yeah, absolutely love it and put the Canon EOS digital strap on it because it's the only spare strap that I had. So started with medium format, I might as well carry on and show you all my medium formats and then I'll break into the 35mm and then the compacts at the end. So next up is this guy. It's the infamous, you guys know it, there's a video on the channel about it. I absolutely love this camera, but it's not my favourite, it's not my favourite medium format. It's the Hasselblad. Yes, I own a Hasselblad. I never thought that in a million years, throughout doing all this photography or anything like that, I would ever own a Hasselblad. This is not the 500cm um, that everyone raves about. It's the Hasselblad 500C, which is very similar, to be honest. It's very similar, it just has the dimmer screen, but will also take all the lenses, all the regular Carl Zeiss, beautiful lenses that this takes. I currently own the 80mm f2.8, which is an absolutely gorgeous lens. I'll put up a couple of sample images of cameras that I've actually taken photos with. There are some on here that I don't have photos with. At the minute, I've kind of done that to the back. I actually done that making the thumbnail for the couple of videos ago for the 2018 video. It won't stay shut, but it's not that a little bit of tape can't fix. It's a Hasselblad. I can get a replacement back, I just don't have the money for it at the minute. It's great, it works at most shutter speeds, it just doesn't work at below one eighth of a second. The shutter, the shutter in the lens stays open where it shouldn't, but it's no biggie because I'm not really doing long exposures with this at the minute. When I will be doing long exposures, it'll probably be over a second anyway, so bulb mode it is. Just listen. I'm gonna take the back off. Just listen to this. Absolutely a thing of beauty. That was at um, 
one twenty fifth of a second by the way. Absolutely love this camera. Really want to shoot more portraits with this and I can't wait to go out and do some night stuff with this. Coming soon. And for medium format, last but certainly by no means least, is this absolute monster of a camera, which is my favourite medium format camera. Although it does have its quirks, but I think that's more to do with my version of the camera than the camera itself. Yes, that's right, it's the Pentax 6x7. I own the regular 6x7, the non-mirror lockup version. I would take a picture with this now, but I do actually have a roll of film in this, which is a roll of Fuji 400H which I don't really want to waste right now because Fuji 400H over here in England is quite expensive. But I bought this from Japan for my 21st birthday. I haven't been to Japan, I imported it. It cost me £400 over here and then I had to pay an extra £100 in port tax because it came from Japan. It's an expensive camera, but this lens made it all worthwhile. This is the 105 f2.4 lens, and oh my god, this is my favorite lens on any camera that I've ever tried so far. Nicer than the Zeiss 2.8 that I've got on the Hasselblad. I absolutely love this camera. If I had to choose one medium format camera throughout the rest of my days of shooting, it would be this guy. The 124G is great for street, the Hasselblad's great for portraits, but I think this is even better for portraits. The downside to this camera, as I'm sure most of you guys know, is that it is an absolute tank. It is ridiculously heavy, but this actually does come with the original strap, which after an hour or two of walking around and having this around your neck, oh my God, does it start to hurt your neck. It really, it put a kink in my neck for about four days after using this. Although to be fair, that time I was walking around the entire day with it. So there's going to be a dedicated video on this camera coming soon because my copy has got a lot of quirks it could but basically it could do with a CLA but I don't have the money to give it a CLA at the minute so I've got to deal with it as it currently stands but I'm going to show you this that nice round aperture oh my god I love this camera. So staying on this shelf, I'm gonna show you these two cameras now. So we're moving into the 35mm cameras now, and I'm gonna start off with the big one, and that being my Leica R5, or R5s. Let me explain. This Leica R5 is the one that's in a previous video saying I bought a £100 Leica, which I did. I bought this for £100, and I absolutely loved the camera. Loved. I broke it. Shutter still work, but I broke it. Basically what happened was I was cleaning the camera and accidentally popped the viewfinder through and within my wisdom of trying to fix it, I know these have replaceable focusing screens, I tried to get at the viewfinder through taking the focus screen out, in hindsight I don't know why I done it, couldn't get it back in and I haven't bothered getting it fixed because I went to a shop to get a quote for a fix and it was cheaper to actually buy another Leica R5 body. So, hence, the second camera. This Leica R5 body has its own problems, which is why there's no lens on either of them. I sold the 50mm Summicron lens that I had. I had the 50mm Summicron F2, and it was a gorgeous lens, don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved it, but the amount of problems that I've had with the Leica R series, I'm not going back there, I need to, honestly, I'm gonna put these on eBay and put them up for uh, spares and repairs. So the issue with this one, is it fires at all shutter speeds, it works perfectly fine, the viewfinder's intact, <laughs> the mirror, the, um, the focusing screen's there, but the problem is this, it's putting these, this weird line through the images that I'm getting at what seems to be higher shutter speeds, and to be honest with you, once that started occurring with this, I tried fresh batteries, I tried, I tried literally everything, 
So I thought, you know what? The amount of problems that I've had, like, I know it's not a lot of problems with this one, this was my fault. But with this one, having that um, electronical failure is what people are saying that it is. Apparently something in the bottom plate, some electronic goes and puts this streak through you, through your photos. So with the amount of issues that I've had with A, breaking the body and B, the electronic failures in this, I decided I'm gonna get I'm gonna get rid of this, get rid of the lens and move away from the SLR style Leicas. Onto another set of cameras. Set. I have two of these. I have two, yes, two, although there's a story behind this why I own them two. I have two Pentax Spotmatics. Neither of them are the Spotmatic F, they are the baseline Spotmatics, and the light meter doesn't work in either of them. So, this one with the case on, with, the, with this leather case, this is my original Spotmatic that I've had for about two years, and honestly, I think I've shot it about twice. The reason I came to own this camera in the first place is because my very first camera, which you will see after this, is a Practica MTL3, which is an M42 mount lens, and I was looking for an upgrade from, from the body. And I read online that people really enjoy the Spotmatic because it's fully mechanical camera, as you can hear. And it does have a meter, but as I say, the meter doesn't work in both copies of this. And by the way, on, this, on my original, I have a Pentacon 1.850mm. Um, it's not the best lens in the world, it's not, it's not the sharpest, but it was my first, um, it was my first 35mm camera lens, so I do quite like it for that reason. So, why do I have two? So this second one, why do I own two? Well, basically, my brother works on the road, and he was in America in thrift shops, and he seen this, and was sending me a picture of it, and was saying, do you want this, is it any good? And I decided to take a gamble on it, my brother not knowing much about film cameras, just in case the light meter worked, because it was only something like $15, which to bring home, it didn't cost him anything to import. And yeah, for, for the sake of what, £10? I thought I'd give it a go, but same again, light meter doesn't work on this. But I've been out with this today, I haven't finished the roll in it. I've been out with this today trying to teach myself Sunny 16. And so far, I think it's going okay. This version does have a bit of an issue with the viewfinder. It's got two black marks on it, which is on the mirror underneath. But it's just the fact that I haven't cleaned it. It, it will be, it will get cleaned and it'll be fine. And it'll be as good as new. And the lens that I have on this is the, it's the F2 Takamar 55mm, which looking through the viewfinder seems like a pretty sharp lens. And just because I'm trying to teach myself Sony 16, I'm going to take a shot. So as I've just mentioned with them two Pentaxes, this was my first ever film camera. Yes, the Practica MTL3 was my very first film camera and I got this to shoot a darkroom module for photography when I was in college. The first six months of my college course doing photography was a darkroom project, and this was in a local camera shop. This and a couple of lenses for 40 pound, and I thought, you know what? Well, my mum actually bought me it. She thought, you know what? If he's doing the darkroom stuff, I might as well get him a de dedicated camera so it wasn't robbing her Canon A1 or uh, AV1 all the time. So, this is my camera. It does have a light leak, hence the sticker on the bottom. But, do you know what? It got me into film. It's a big, clunky box. It works at all shutter speeds. It does have a meter. Meter is not the best, unfortunately. And as I said, with the Pentaxes, this does take an M42 mount screw lens. So you can actually get a Carl Zeiss 50mm for this. That's pretty cheap. Might do a cheap, cheap body expensive lens kind of video. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. But I do have to get the light seals on the back replaced before I can do anything with it. Also, it's not the most discreet for going out and taking street shots, if you listen to the shutter. Yeah, it, it's a tank.
So next up, I'm gonna show you guys this one, which is my only rangefinder that I have. It's this, being my Kodak Retina 3S. This has got a lot of feature on the channel recently because I'm getting used to this new 35mm lens that I've got. Basically, it's a rangefinder. It's got a built-in light meter, which requires no batteries, and all the lenses have leaf shutters in, which is absolutely fantastic for street. There's no film in this right now, so take a listen to how quiet the shutter is. Yeah, that was at 125th. It's pretty quiet. It's great for street photography. With it being a rangefinder, it's focusing on it is super quick. However, on mine, if I take the lens off, I'll be able to show you. The rangefinder patch doesn't keep up with the focus and tab on the lens because it's basically worn out. This used to be my mum's camera and I've basically picked it up off the shelf and started shooting it again. It just needs a quick CLA to re-lube all the focus and mechanism with inside. But I'm still enjoying shooting it. I'm absolutely loving the 35mm at the minute, video coming soon. And the other thing that I'll say about this is due to the fact that the focusing isn't keeping up with the rangefinder patch in the middle, it's teaching me how to zone focus, which is a skill that I've needed to learn anyway. So I can honestly say this is my favorite 35 mm camera so far, whether it's because of the lens, whether it's because it's teaching me zone focusing or whether it's just because it's quiet. It's just inspiring me to pick it up and I'm really enjoying it. It's keeping the Leica dream alive which is worrying me because that's going to be expensive. And last but not least within my 35mm regular cameras is this guy. My Canon AE-1. This has got the most love and most use off me. I absolutely love this camera. It's wonderful. My battery door does not shut properly. It's got a crack on it, but it makes a nice grip. <laughs> so currently on this, I've got the 50mm f1.8, and you know what? I've used this lens that much that I can bring it up and I, I can focus pretty quick. The A1 is a shutter priority camera, which is slowly turning me away from it, to be honest. If you guys follow the Instagram, you will know that I really haven't wanted to pick this camera up recently because I'm not feeling inspired to shoot it. And I think one of the reasons for that is the fact that it's shutter priority. It's not aperture priority because when I was shooting the Leica R5 bodies, I was putting that into aperture priority and I think that helped me enjoy the camera more. I just prefer aperture priority to shutter priority. But on the other hand, I know when I pick this up, I know the light meter is going to work. I know it's a reliable camera and it's got a nice sharp lens on it. I've took some of my favorite images on this camera and you know what? All of my favorite images have been with this 50mm f1.8, which came with it at the time. This was actually an upgrade to the Practica that I got for shooting in college, which was great. It was, I'm so happy with this upgrade, but I'm starting to feel like I need, it's time for either a new SLR or just keep the Leica dream going because I feel like I've grown out of this camera a little bit. It's just not inspiring me to pick it up and shoot it. Let me know down below if that's ever happened to you with one of your cameras. You love the camera, you know you can get great images with it, but you just don't want to pick it up. It might be because I've got so many cameras, maybe. So moving on to my compact cameras, I don't have a lot of them, so it's not gonna be as long as the rest of the video. I'm gonna start off with this one, which is the Canon Auto Boy. It's the Canon AF35M, which is a 38mm f2.8 lens on it, basically a 40mm, call it that. It's got a built-in meter between ISO 25 and ISO 400, so no push and film on there but it doesn't read the DX codes, which is quite nice compared to the other two compacts that I've got. Backstory behind this, I picked this up in Spain on holiday. We went into a, a charity shop over in Spain and this was sat in one of the shelves and I've, the communication between the guy in Spain and me was really, really weird because obviously I speak English, 
he was native Spanish, he didn't understand English, and this cost me $20, not $20, 20 euro. But the issue that I've got with this camera is, is that it chews through AA batteries like I don't know what. It literally eats AA batteries for breakfast. And second of all is the back doesn't shut properly. I have shut a couple of rolls with this just by taping the door shut, but it's the fact that the battery door doesn't shut properly. It's lost a, um, a bit of plastic there. It's lost a bit of plastic on the back door. And the shutter on this is ridiculously loud. I don't even want to describe it. If I had any spare double AA, double A's knocking around, I'd have a fire for you, but I've got none, <laughs> none around because who uses double A's anymore? It's a nice sharp lens. I'll put up some images from it after this little talky bit. But now it's been a while since I picked this up. It does have a built-in flash, but I've never actually used it. So second out of my compacts is this little guy that you're going to see a video on in the next couple of weeks. This is the Fujifilm Clear Shot 20 Auto. Look at this. This is the typical point and shoot that you'd see knocking around. Same again, it does take AA batteries. I've got none in it. But this was the camera that I used to shoot as a kid. And you know what? Bringing this up to your eye, the viewfinder on it is massive. I can't tell you what lens it's got on it. It's just a cheap plastic point and shoot camera from back in the day and you know what I can't wait to go out and shoot this again but I must use Fujifilm as it says in there yeah I've got no images from this because I, I don't know what's been shot on it or what or anything but I'm gonna do a video on this little guy soon a, like a cheap camera challenge or something like that because you can pick this up super cheap and it it's been a long time like a long long time since I've been out with this because as I say this is my childhood camera I found this down the side of my bed so I'm looking forward to um, taking this out in a future episode and it'll be good fun yeah got no images from it just look forward to that and finally the absolute best compact camera that I own the Yashica T2 so the Yashica T2 is a pretty infamous point and shoot camera so I'm not going to go into too much detail because you probably already know it. So for those of you who don't know this is a point and shoot made by Yashica which has a Carl Zeiss 35mm f3.5 lens on it which is super super sharp. It has a built in flash which for me has been absolutely perfect. The one downside I've got with this camera, well my version of it anyway, is the bottom of it. it doesn't have a battery door so a bit of tape and holding your thumb underneath the battery fixes that I can live with that for the price that I got this at as you guys know this is not a cheap point and shoot but mine was I managed to get this for 25 pounds which is an absolute steal just because I had no battery door to be entirely honest with you I'm thinking about going back to the school that I used to work at because they have a 3d printer and I'm considering 3d printing the bottom door because it'll work and it'll be good fun. It saves me holding my thumb under it. Having the 35mm on here has been wonderful because I've been shooting from the hip a bit more. So holding the camera actually down by my hip and letting it, letting it take the shot. It does have a loud shutter, but to be honest with you, on the street, it's not that loud as long as you're not stood directly next to someone. I know that because I've been out with this today. So yeah, it's, it's a great little camera. I wouldn't recommend going out and buying one straight away, but if you can get one that says it's broken because it's got no battery door or something stupid like that, a little bit of gaff tape will sort you right out and it's so worth the 20 pound I paid for it. I'd pay up to about 75 pound if you can find it on a good deal, but no, great camera, highly recommended. And finally, the last two cameras that I have in my collection are both Polaroids. I have a Polaroid Bang 636 close-up, is that right? 636 close-up. I knew it. 
I would take a picture with this now, but I do actually have some um, Polaroids in this, so I'm not. But yeah, just your classic standard Polaroids. I've got some of the new Polaroids originals in there, some colour. And to be honest with you, yeah, it's still the first pack of the Polaroids original in there. It's not a standout camera. It's a it's great little bring it up to your eye, take the picture, walk away. It's, it's a Polaroid. What else do you want me to say? It's not an SX70. But this has been great for parties and stuff like that. So I put a couple of images up on screen of this and it's really fun. Just take what you yeah, take to parties, family events, stuff like that. People love Polaroids. And the second Polaroid camera that I own is this, which is a Polaroid LAN camera. This is a Polaroid 420 LAN camera. This is another one of them cameras that was imported from America for me by my brother from a thrift shop. I will pop it open for you. To be honest with you, I bought this with the hope of getting some, um, not the Fuji FP stuff, because it's far too expensive. I was gonna look at getting some of the new 55, and then not long after he brought this home for me, the new 55 went under. So this is gonna get sold pretty quick. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's gonna be sold for a high amount because there's no film for it anymore. Or I might hold on to it if someone in the future wants to, you know, either donate some FP100C or, or has an idea of bringing back Peel Apart. Please, I've never shot it. So I'll extend this out for you just so you can see how it works. So basically you've got your compos composing screen up here and you've got your rangefinder focus up here in the second one and your rangefinder in and your focusing is done by moving these two tabs on the top which moves the bellows in and out. Nice and simple, not much to it. It's just, it's just a Polaroid LAN camera really. I haven't had a chance to shoot with this so there'll be no sample images or anything like that. But it's a shame really, I would love to use this. Someone let me know if anyone's making any peel aparts. I'd love to use it. So if any of you guys are still here, thank you for sticking to the end. I know this has been a lot longer than anticipated. It's took me a lot longer to record and edit than I expected to. I didn't realize how many cameras I actually had. So without any further ado, thank you for sticking around this long. It's been Garth here from Murphy's Film. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and all that other good stuff. And coming up at the end here, you get the option to subscribe. And also a bonus video that you may or may not have seen if you're new around here. If you stuck around to the end, thank you. It's been Garth here. Peace.